Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and we're designing techtips.com. Well, this is another video in our Divi for Beginners series and we're going to show you how to make this full width image slider right here. I'm going to call it a hero slider because quite often on home pages of sites, you'll see a little slider like this introducing the site's features. Really easy to do, no coding involved. So let's get started. I'm going to go up to the top, enable my visual builder. Okay, once the builder loads, we've got our little slider here. It's rolling around every four seconds at the moment. That's what I've got it set to. When I put my mouse on it, it'll stop rolling around. And we've got a nice image in the background. We've got a title, we've got a bit of content, and we've got a button right here. We've got pagination dots are hidden a little bit there behind the add module button. And we've got little arrows that we can slide back and forth to the slides. Really easy to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new section, a little blue button to add a section, a little green button to add a row, a little dark button to add a module. So I'm going to hit the blue button to add a section. Now that's going to give us a few options here. We've got a regular section that I'm going to use today. You can use a specialty section that has kind of different layouts for you. And you can also add a full width section. Now in the full width section, they've got a limited amount of modules, but they do have a full width slider right down here at the bottom as well as some others. But I'm going to use a regular section. I'm going to show you how to make that full width purely because it's a really good thing to know. So let's just close that. We'll go back. We'll hit the blue button to add a section. I'm going to use a regular section. Inside my section, whenever you add a section, it'll ask you to put a row in there. I'm going to add a single column. Inside that column, it's going to prompt you to put a module with a dark button there. I'm going to just delete our slider from the top here. Always a little trash can on these modules if ever you want to delete something. If you delete something by mistake, just hit your Control Z or Control Z key. And it'll undo it for you. You've also, if we go down to the bottom here, if you expand your little purple button, you've got a little clock icon there. If you click on it, it'll tell you all your edits before the last time you saved. And you can click on one of these and go back to your last edit. That's a really useful thing to know also. Okay, well, let's get rid of this little section up here and build our little slider. So I'm going to go in there, hit the little dark module. Divi comes as standard with all these modules here. I'm going to use a slider module for this today. And there it is right there. When it opens up, it gives you two slides to work with right here. Let's just get rid of the second one and we'll start with one. So let's go into that slide, hit the little cog. Obviously you can give you a title here. And there's a button there. If you don't want to have a button on you, just simply select it and delete it. You'll have no button there. Just undo that again. Put your content down below. This is a WYSIWYG. What you see was what you get. Editor, you can align, paragraph, add media, make titles, bullet points, etc. right here. I'm going to leave mine just on the default right there. Obviously, put in whatever text you want to put on yours. Now, even image and video, if you want to, you can add an image or a video inside this slide here. If you click on that, if you want to use an image, hit add image. And then pop whatever image you happen to want in there. What it's going to do is it, it's going to put the image in on the left hand side and push the right into the right. Now you can add a video instead of if you want to. Hit the plus. I've actually got a video here we download from Pexels for another video the other day. Let's load that one in there just to show you. I think it's just some jellyfish. And that'll pop that video in there for you. I'm not particularly interested in having a video in mine. So I'm going to get rid of that. I'm also going to get rid of the image too. So we just got a regular slide here. Now each slide can be unique. So you can add different things to each slide here if you want to. Great. Well, let's close the image and video. That was just a little demo for you. 
link. If you want this slide to link somewhere, you can put a link in here. If you want to put a link in for the button, you can put it in here. Always best practice if you're linking to your own site, keep it in the same window. If you're linking off site, open it in a new tab. And of course, it goes without saying links are great for directing your visitors where you want to take them. Now, if we go on there, we've got background here. And we did a whole module on backgrounds. We did a whole video on that, I should say. You've got color, gradient, image, video, background pattern, and background mask. And you can combine several of these together. Have a look at our background videos if you want to go into that in more detail. I'm going to just pop a picture or an image into mine. I'm going to hit the image. I'm going to click add an image. And we'll pop that picture in. Great. We've got a nice little background image there. You can choose to use a parallax effect on it if you want to. When we roll the picture now, it stays where it is. Now that's actually CSS parallax or fixed background. It's saying true parallax there, but I don't think that is true parallax. That's CSS parallax right there. And if we turn that back off, we've got various background image settings here. You can set it to cover, fit, actual size, stretch, custom size. By default, it's always going to put the picture center center of whatever image you've got there. You can have it top left, etc. here, position it exactly how you want. I don't want any repeat on mine because it's covering the whole image. And we covered background image blends in our last one. You can blend the gradients and colors. For instance, if I put perhaps a blue in back here, I go back to the image icon here. If you want to blend it with that blue, go down here, switch it to multiply or one of the other ones down here, and it'll give you some amazing effects. You see that's got a nice blue hue to it right now. And they've got some wonderful effects. One of my favorites, Luminosity right there. Just for fun, I'm going to leave that back on the multiply, multiply with the blue there, and we'll leave that just like that. Well, I'm fairly happy with my slide there. Perhaps you might want to decorate your button. Okay, if we move over to our design tab now, I'm not going to use it on this one, but there's an option to add an overlay to the background. You won't really be able to see it too well. It'll darken it down slightly to make sure text stand out. I'll demonstrate this on another image in a moment. It'll become more apparent. Or you can have it just over the text. And again, that's kind of hard to see, but there's a little gradient in the back, or there's a little opaque black background on the text there. Like I say, I'll show you that again with a better background. Now, navigation, that's the little arrows. We've only got one slide at the moment, so it's not going to show them, but there will be little arrows here, and you can decorate those with the colors you want down here. And then the pagination or dot navigation will be underneath, and you can choose what colors you want there. Once we've got a few slides in there, we'll come back and I'll show you exactly what that thing. Now I show you, showed you how to add an image. Here you can manipulate it by changing the position of it or giving it rounded corners if you want to. You can also give it borders and box shadow. So let's roll on down. We've got a load of filters to use with your image as well. I'll demonstrate that in the next slide. Now here we've got text. Text is all text. That's the title and the text itself. And you can choose to align it where you want to align it. Left, center, right, or justify. I'm going to leave mine in the center. Text colors light. You can give it any color you want. I'll show you that in a second. Text shadow. You can use it if you want to. Won't make much difference on this particular picture. Title text. You can give your title text totally different settings than your regular text. Did this huge library of fonts. Let's just change this. I've got one I use kind of blocky called Anton. Just put it in the search up there. There it is. And I'll change that to Anton. I'm going to capitalize it. So I'm going to make it perhaps bold. Make it even more blocky. Text colors fine. Well, just for fun, let's change it to a blue. Let's make that blue a little bit lighter by clicking on the color itself. Just grabbing the little circle, dragging it up to a lighter color. Or of course you can type in a text, a hex color in there or RGBA, whatever you want to use. That'll work for me. Make those letters a little further apart. There we go. 
And again, I could add a bit of text shadow and use it as a light in the background just by adding a bit of text shadow there and turning it from the sort of gray shadow color to a light white color. And you've got a little bit of a glow in the background there. Not sure if that really works, but it's an option that uh, is used quite often. We can take the opacity on that color down a little bit if it's too much. So it's just a little subtle glow in the background. And you can go on and decorate your title however you like. And like I say, each slide can be absolutely unique. If we roll on down, we can do it exactly for the body text. I'm not going to do it because it's exactly the same settings as our title text here. And you can also customize that button to your heart's content by going into the button, hitting the little switch to turn the button styles on or to guess. Text size is fine. Text color is fine. Button background. Let's make that blue. And we'll make it a similar sort of blue as we had before. I could, could have copied that text color or that hex code, I should say. And little dotted slider always within the color when you click on a color field is transparency. I'm going to take that down a bit so we can see some of our image behind there. Just like that. Great. Okay, I'm going to take that text shadow off of that title there. It's annoying me. So let's, I'm going to go down to our text shadow. I'm going to hit the little stop to remove it just like that. That's a lot sharper, isn't it? Okay, well, I'm going to call that slide one. So what we need to do is hit the little green check mark to save the slide. Remember, we're in the slide at the moment. When I save this, it'll take us back to the main slider settings. Now, if you want to have a similar one with the similar styles and everything to your first one, you can hit the two squares to clone it. Or if you want another unique one, just hit add new slide here. We'll add new slide. I'm going to leave the title. Well, I guess I'll call it slide two. I'll leave everything else exactly the same here. Let's pop a little image in this time. I'll leave the video. Links we know about exactly the same as the last one. Background, we'll just pop a different image in this background here. And in a moment, I'll show you how to animate these slides, obviously. So there we go. We've got a little image in this one here, which is great. Don't need anything else on the content. If we go to design now, roll back up. That writing is getting a little lost. So if we go in our overlay, I can put a background overlay in there. Darkens that down. We can read this writing a lot easier. That's kind of nice like that. If I switch that back off, you'll see the difference again. Also, we've got a text overlay, which will just put it behind the actual writing there. That's okay, but it's kind of made it a little bit deeper because it's added a bit of padding top, bottom, left and right. So I think what I'm going to do, turn that back off, turn that back on. I quite like that. That's very easy to read. You can still see the image nicely in the background. Let's close that up now. And if we go to image now, image alignment set to center by default. If we put it on the bottom, you can actually stack things on the bottom. And that's great if you've got a, so you see this a lot if you've got a cutout of a person or something like that and they're pointing to something over here. That's a great way of using that bottom one there. I put that back up there. You can round out the corners here, obviously, by putting a pixel value in there. Let's put 30 pixels in there. If you've got the chain check, it does all four at once. If you uncheck it, you can get some stupid shapes going on by giving it various different sizes either side. And if you start off with a square image, you can give it 50% rather than pixels. It'll make it perfectly round for you. That's a little bit crazy. Let's get it all back. Something like that. Let's get it back maybe to five pixels, little tiny rounded corners there. Like I say, you can give it borders if you want. Simply give it the width of border that you want there. And the color that you want. You've got a border. If you want to set it off a little bit more from the surrounding, you can give it a little bit of box shadow. Just darkens it down a little bit. That works best on white backgrounds. Great. Well, I'm happy with that little slide there. We'll just add one more, then I'll show you exactly how to make this automatically animate and we'll make it full width also. Actually, if I go back up into that image, one thing I didn't 
show you is that all these lovely filters they've got here, you can change that image. Remember, we're actually in the image chevron itself right here. We're under image. They've got all these lovely filters and you can create some great photographic effects. You can change all the hues and the colors of that image. As I roll around, you can see those colors changing there. Saturation, you can make it more colorful or less colorful. Quite like that. Brightness, obviously, is brightness. Contrast is the difference between the light colors and the dark colors. It's a really nice sort of, as almost a cartoony effect going on there. And more subtle, the other side. Image invert, that will turn the colors to their opposites. Almost got a negative effect there. Sepia is like an oldie weldy type image. Opacity is transparency or see-throughness. If I take this down, you'll start seeing that background image bleed through. Image blur, that's pretty self-explanatory. If you want to make it fuzzy, just do that. And we've talked about blend mode before. If you can blend it with a color in the background or if you want to. Great. So we're going to say we're happy with slide two. So I'm going to save it. It'll take us back to our main slider settings. Let's just add one more. I'll clone this one this time. So we instantly got another one there. We'll go into our next one. Call it slide three. And I'm going to leave everything exactly the same. I'm going to take that image away from this one. Take something away. Always roll over it. You'll see some little icons appear. A little trash can. We'll get rid of it for you. And let's just change out the background image. Background's always under content. There's our image. And we'll just throw in one more image. Right, well, let's animate this thing. I might darken that down a bit. That's a little bit hard to read there. So we know where that is. In design. Right up the top. Overlay. And if you want to make it darker, just click on the color there. I'll make it fully black. Pull over your opacity slider we were talking before. Just take it down to where you're happy with it. Great. Well, let's do the animation there. Make sure you're in the slider settings, not in one of your slides. I'll show you exactly why in a moment. What we're going to do is go over to the design tab. Roll all the way down to the bottom and you'll find animation. Open that up. You'll find automatic animation there. Now, if you don't see that there, chances are you're in one of your slides. Because if I go into one of the slides now, hit the little cog, go over to design. There's no animation down there. And I get this question every time I build a slider. Uh, there's no animation. Chances are, if there's no animation, you're in a slide. You're not in your main slider. So just hit the green check mark. It'll take you back to your main slider settings there. Design down the bottom. There's your animation. Great. Well, let's go to animation. I'm going to flip the little switch there from automatic animation to on, funnily enough. The default settings is it's going to slide every seven seconds right there. I'm going to change that four seconds, 4,000 milliseconds. And down below, we've got continue automatic slide on hover. The default is set. If you put your mouse on it, it'll stop so they can read it and click the button, etc. If you switch that to on, it'll continue rolling every four seconds, whether they got their mouse on it or not. And we mentioned earlier the navigation. There's a little arrows to go between your little slides there. And here's the little pagination dots. And you can change those colors still under design there. As you can see, it's animating there. Another navigation. There's the arrow color and dot navigation color. That's great. Well, we've got this rolling around. It's doing exactly what we want. It's flashing a bit, a little bit in between slides there. It does that when we're in the builder mode, but it'll be nice and smooth on the front end. Let's make this full screen. Now, what I was saying earlier, let's just save all our changes if you're happy with your slider there. 
was you could have made this full screen by using a full screen module. But you can make any row full screen, and that's the reason I did this, so I can show you this. If you go into any row, green tab for a row, little cog to get in there, go over to design and sizing. We roll down, we've got width there. If you slide that slider up to 100%, copy that 100%, control C, and paste it in max width down below, control V to paste, or you can just type in 100% there. You can see we've now got a full width slider because that row is now full width and you can do that with any row, which is awesome. Great, but we've got a bit of space at the top and at the bottom there, so let's take that away. Space that we see at the top and the bottom is in our row and our section. So we're in our row at the moment. If I go to design tab, close up sizing where we were already, just underneath we've got spacing. I'm going to go down to padding and put a zero where it says top. Then I'm going to hit the chain and do the bottom. Now it's shrunk up a little bit there because it's taken it from the row. But we still got a little bit left in the section. By default, it gives you this much. And I'll show you how to set up global settings in another video. Let's save this and let's go into our section then. Blue tab for a section. We do exactly the same thing. Design, spacing. I'll put a zero in there. I hit the chain and it's now butted up against our header up here and our next section below here looks like i've got a spare section in there now if ever you're not sure what's going on here there's no content down here it may have been when i was demonstrating adding a section or something if we go down to the bottom make sure your little purple button's expanded little icon to left hand side is wireframe mode or if you, if you click on it, it'll take you to the back end. And if we look at this, yeah, we've got a couple of sections there. I was demoing those different sections for you. Here's our top section with a row in it, with a slider. Then we've got an empty section that I was dem demonstrating the full width section. That's why they're purple. Just trash that. And a regular section when I was demonstrating the speciality section, probably. Now we'll get rid of that and we're back to our slider on top and our next row on the bottom. When you're happy, just flip back to desktop mode or tablet or mobile, whichever one you want. And there it is, there's our full width slider. Let's save this, make sure that everything's gonna work on the front end. Save draft or publish if you're ready. And let's exit the visual builder. There's our first slide there. Four seconds later, there's our second little slide. Four seconds later again, there's our last little slide. Put your mouse over it, it's gonna stop. You can read it, you can roll over the button, take people where you want. We can use our arrows to navigate one way. And we can also use our pagination to navigate also. And that's a great little feature to have on your site. It's totally responsive if we look at it on tablet and mobile. Hit my F12 key. There it is on an iPhone 12. And you can adjust various settings for tablet and mobile. And I'll show you that in another video. Let's look at it on an iPad. Here we are on an iPad Air. And that's working perfectly. Let's get rid of this now. So there you go, guys. There is how to create a hero section with the Divi theme. Really great feature to have on your site. I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. Don't forget, if you've got any questions, pop them down below. I'll do my best to answer them for you or make a little demo video like this one. Once again, this has been Jamie with System22 and webdesigndetectives.com Thanks for watching. Have a great day.